Here's an update on the build of my Imperial Knight Titan. Where I'm at at the moment, uh, still working on the legs, although I've done a little bit of work on torso pieces as well. Pretty much uh, in the cleaning up stage at the moment and starting to glue a few things together. Um, the trickiest part so far has been with the main leg assemblies. I've been trying um, some crazy glue because the resin pieces need uh, need a super glue to stick together. The plastic glue isn't going to work. So I've just been using some of the uh, the crazy glue, which has the brush applicator, which uh, will just help get onto some of the ridges a little bit better. What I'm finding though is that it's not as sticky or fast acting as I had uh, initially thought. <clears throat> um, and I'm not sure if that's because the uh, the actual resin pieces need to be buffed up a bit. Uh, so what I've done on these these other pieces is I've just taken some sandpaper and I've just scuffed up the inside ridges just to sort of break the surface and give it a little bit more of a um, surface area to bond to. So I'm hoping that when this leg comes together that it will will stick together fairly nicely because what I've had to do so far is glue it together and then some of the extra bits just kind of had to tack it into the um, into the gaps. As you can see by some of the colouring there I've got some liquid green stuff and I've just daubed that around into areas where there's still a little run of seams, just a little bit of, bit of gap. It hasn't been too bad. Uh, but I'm just letting that sit for a couple of hours and then I'll just sand that down. That's just using the um, the liquid green stuff, which is a kind of a viscousy, liquidy putty, I guess you could say, which can just be applied using a brush or a toothpick or something like that. And uh, it just helps to fill in some of the gaps. <clears throat> As I say, it hasn't been too bad so far. The, the roughest piece so far has been the uh, hip assembly. Just because there's been a little bit of warping, I think, with the, the actual resin mold, it's just fractionally out of alignment in some parts, uh, which isn't really going to show up when it's all, all together, but uh, just required a little bit of flexing to, to get everything to line up. And then just a little bit more green stuff just to, uh, to fill in some of the, the gaps there, but not too bad. Um, I did buy a Dremel tool. And uh, so far I've been using this largely just for a bit of sanding, um, mainly just to, to get some of the excess flash off the, uh, off the sprues, some of them there's, there's been quite a bit. Um, the main parts that I've worked on are the, uh, the feet. There was quite a large piece of flash coming off the, uh, the top of the foot there and I was just able to use the, uh, the Dremel tool to just sand that gently down and it came up with a, a real nice nice surface and then I was just able to use the sandpaper to finish that off. But so far I've been, uh, been quite impressed with that. So uh, the greaves, just cut the flashing off, cleaned those up. Um, these parts will probably go on towards, towards the end um, because they'll be painted up in the, uh, the main colors. So the next step from here is going to be to clean up the pistons. You can see that there's large bits of flash on there that need to be taken off. And once those are done and the, uh, the legs are all fully glued together, I'll be able to get the, uh, the ankle tilts and um, get that all glued in make a nice solid base and get the, uh, the foot together glue all of that together and then put the pistons in on the sides. I'm also going to need to play around with these little parts here which I believe are armor mounting for the uh, for the greaves so they will they will end up hooking in there somehow 
So yeah, just uh, just a lot of cleaning up at the moment, getting everything prepped and ready for gluing. Uh, the gluing is obviously taking a bit of time and patience, because when you're working with super glue, trying to get everything lined up properly so it doesn't uh, go horribly crooked. But yeah, once once these have been cleaned up to to my satisfaction, then things will start to go together, and uh, then we'll be able to uh, get the legs assembled and probably start do a, a base coat on those and get them uh, started. So yeah, that's the latest update on that. We uh, should have more for you soon. All right, it's later on in the day, and I've got a little bit more progress to show you. Most of the leg components have been cleaned up and in this case I've got the, the legs and the hips all together so I'll just uh, show you what's been going on. So you can see the uh, pistons have been added on the sides uh, in between the hips we've got some pistons in here Around the back you can see you've got your, your other piston details. Probably a few more decorative uh, things that will go on these hooks here. It's also an area underneath where the, uh, the tabard will hook that will be done probably last. You can see this being quite a fragile piece to, uh, to hang off there so I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with that yet. You can see the uh, the connector from the hips to the torso. I've glued this piece on, uh, but there's also another piece that goes on top of that, and uh, they will just glue on there like so. And then the torso bracket slots in over the top of that. Now, what they they recommend is that you get a, a piece of sprue or plastic or something to go over the top so that you're still able to move the, the torso, swivel it. What I've actually done is I have drilled out the top part of that and I've put in a magnet, a fairly strong rare earth magnet. Um, I may need to go with something a little bit bigger but I'll, I'll have to see how the assembly goes. But the plan is it's going to be glued onto here. It's going to slot over here and I'm going to use some epoxy putty. I just got some milli putt. And I'm going to put uh, another larger rear earth magnet over the top where that hole is. So just kind of attach it there. A uh, larger rear earth magnet. And it should give you the option to be able to swivel, but also just get a little bit of rocking motion on there, um, which won't do a heck of a lot, but it should, should make it so you can get some slightly more expressive poses being able to tilt the torso up and down sort of leaning into um, aiming weapons and, and things like that so that's those uh, these, these other pieces down here they are going to be connector pieces for the greaves so we've got our, our greave piece here and on the inside it's got some slots and a little hole and that's essentially just going to slide over the leg piece like that <clears throat> so that's not going to be glued until it's all painted because this part is actually going to have the armor plating colors uh, whereas the, the, the rest of this skeleton is going to be done in a variety of metals um, some weathering added and that sort of thing uh, in addition to the greaves there, there's also some knee pads which will go in here and then you've got the upper thigh guards which will go up there so when when you're done the leg is going to be armoured at the front and that's all going to be uh, colour coordinated and, and you could probably put in de a decal or free paint some stuff in there so that is how that is going to look Forget the base. It's going to stand uh, like that. This uh, again, there's not too much 
um, posability in this. It's going to be pretty solid. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do to anchor this in yet. Um, for stability purposes, I may consider filling in the bottom of the feet and throwing on some, some magnets or some doweling so that it's removable from the base for um, carrying purposes, moving it around. Um, also for gameplay purposes, this space is quite big to sort of have to move around on the on the table. Uh, so it may actually end up looking better just having the the legs free. Um, but the the base is a perfect opportunity to have a, a real good sort of diorama effect, um, so that you can put the the model sort of into its into its battlescape, uh, so that everything you know, looks looks more epic on the tabletop. So the next plan for this is a base coat of black. Um, uh, some people use grey, others go with white. I, I tend to, to like the, the black base coat. It's a bit more forgiving, especially with uh, what I'm planning on doing is just dry brushing um, a lot of, of the, the metal, the bolt gun metal, and uh, I'll probably use some copper tones and some brass on, uh, on the pistons and uh, pick out the various details, maybe some spot colour for the uh, the skulls and things like that. But this this part of the chassis can be quite uh, dirtied up because this part that's going to be striding across the battlefield, kicking up dust and debris. Probably put uh, some scorch marks on the armour when that's all done. So yeah, that will be the, the next step and I'll probably paint that up, I think, and I'll have... Uh, good idea of the color effects I want to use. As you can see I've used uh, green stuff on both the legs just to smooth off those joins. Just a little bit of the, the putty in and around just to fill in the gaps, just make it uh, a bit cleaner for the, uh, the painting process and just helps to make the finished product look you know, that, much, that much crisper, that much uh, tidier. I think the only other thing I've got to do at the moment before I get onto the the paint is the hoses assembly. There's a variety of, uh, of hoses that will probably be connected to various parts. I just need to um, double check and make sure that I'm not missing any of that. So yeah, it, um, it's been, been interesting. Uh, the instructions have been less than intuitive, but uh, if you have any experience putting models together and doing a lot of dry fitting, you can avoid some of the, the usual pitfalls of putting pieces in backwards or things like that. So there we go, uh, that's probably all I'll do on this one for today, but uh, I'm actually looking forward to, uh, to getting the base coat underway and uh, getting some, uh, some paint on it just to, to, to get that feel that uh, there's actually a machine coming to life there. So there we go, thanks.